This is going to go over how to scan your systems using the Nessus Professional Scanner. First off, to create a new scan, you would click on the New Scan button on the right-hand side. This is after you've logged in. You're either in My Scans or All Scans. I tend to create mine in My Scans, and then that way if someone else logs in, they have their own separate scans. But in this case, I'm under My Scans, and I'm going to hit New Scan. If you scroll down, there is a scan type called Credential Patch Scan. First, you would name your scan. So let's just call this My Scan Job. I would highly rec recommend breaking up your scans. Maybe do all your workstations in one scan, all of your domain controllers with a scan, breaking up your servers into different scans. And even with workstations, if you have a large, large number of workstations to scan, maybe separate those up into bunches. The reason being is there's a lot of processing power that has to happen, a lot of data that's aggravated one that once those scans are completed, and if you put everything into one scan job, you could create a situation where you're overburdening your systems and network. Plus, as you will see here, you can schedule those scans to go off at different times. That way they don't interfere with each other and still get all the data and information you're looking for. So we've named the job. You can put it in a description and then the folder you want to keep it in. Again, you can create new folders. Instead of it being in my scans, you could say workstation scans or server scans and then organize your particular scans. Next would be putting in the targets. You can put these in by IP address. As it's shown here, you can put it in by domain name. So maybe the host names with the complete domain information. You can even put it in by a particular subnet or grouping. So in this case, I have a curated list of IP addresses. So I've put in my list of IP addresses. This could be host names separated by comma and a space. You could put in a subnet of a small group of section of your network that you want to put in. But just for an example state, here's the IP addresses of the machines I want to scan. So then you go into credentials. Depending on what you're scanning, in my case, it happens to be Windows machines. So I'm going to click on the Windows credential. And you put in the various information that is needed and the credentials to access those machines as an administrator on that machine. In this case, I'm doing multiple machines. None of them are connected to a domain. I have a administrator account with the same password on all of those machines. It's a part of my basic image for my lab. And so I'm putting that information in so I can connect. The next thing is automatically checked is never send credentials in the clear. You don't want to do that. You don't want to use NTLM v1 authentication. Hopefully you have your machines locked down and using NVLM2 at a minimum. Next is to start the remote registry service during the scan. If it's already running, it's not going to make a difference, but this will start that remote registry service during the scan. What I have on my machines is that service is set to manual and it has to be kicked off by an administrator. Again, logging in with our administrator accounts during this scan, I'm going to tell it start that remote registry service during the scan. It will also set it back and turn it off when it's done. I'm going to tell it to enable administrative shares during that scan and then start the server service during that scan. All of these things are necessary just to make sure that these things are accessible and turned on so that the scan can do the job that it needs to do. So now that I've got my credentials, I'd go to plugins and all plugins are automatically added by default on the Nessus Professional product. So there's nothing you have to do there. You don't have to add, remove plugins, things of that nature. So now we'll go under schedule and you could say, hey, I want this to go off at a certain time every day. You can put in and fill out that particular information. In my case right now, I'm just gonna kick off this scan so I can show you how all this works. But if you wanted to, you could schedule each individual scan so that it goes off on certain days, how often and during what times. Then you can have it email. If it's uh, configured for the SMTP server, you could have it send out emails when things complete and even attach a report. Discovery for port scans. Right now it's only going to scan for common ports. I always select all ports because I want to know everything that's running on that box. I want to confirm that only particular ports are open and running on that particular box so that I can make sure it's on my approved ports and protocols list. Assessment, only use credentials provided by the user. I would not uncheck that, it's checked by default. Then there's some brute forcing capability. 
I use these in rare cases. I don't normally do this on an automated scan, but there's brute force to be able to try and get into Windows, try and do malware things, and database. Right now, we're just doing a patch scan, so that's all I want to be able to do. So we've got our scan configured. We've got our credentials. We know what our plugins are. And from a setting standpoint, we also know what assets that we're going to scan. So I'm going to hit save. With that, I can turn around and you can see because I had clicked on that schedule button and enabled it, it's ready to take off on February 25th at 12.30 p.m. If I wanted to, I could click on that scan and then click configure, go back to schedule and disable that. So easy to go in and out, change configuration settings on your particular scanner, add more IP addresses, take away certain things, whatever it is, and then you can go here to the launch to launch that scan. Or if you go back to my scans, right next to each scan will be a little start button and you can click that to launch. When your scan starts to run, you'll see the two arrows spinning here, letting you know that that scan is running at that time. You can also click on the scan and it will show you each of the machines it has been able to find and it starts to scan each of those machines. This is why I wouldn't do a large number of machines depending on your environment because every single machine is being scanned with that scan at the same time so not only is there processing power on each of the individual machines but your scanner is also conducting a lot of processing at the same time because of the number of machines and information it's going to provide. It also gives you a percentage of how much of the scan has been done, the number of items that have been found while that scan is running, it's a live chart. As you can see, it just changed on each of these hosts. It will keep the history of every time the scan ran. So you can actually go back and look at the history. The unfortunate part is you have to click on each one and go through them individually. There's no chart of history or anything of that nature. And then it will show the identified vulnerabilities that it has found that will be in that report once the scans are done. Once your scan has completed, which will take some time, so I paused the video and now we're back to our screen, you can go into your scan job and you'll notice that the launch button is available because it's not running. So it doesn't have those two green circles showing that it's running. You can click on your scan job. You can go to hosts and there is your information on what vulnerabilities have been found what categories they are per host. The problem is you have to go through and you have to click on each one to find the information and then trying to correlate that information to find out the number of vulnerabilities per host can be a little bit more daunting. With that being said though, you do have all your information here. A few things that I wanna bring up is you can go in and go to history. You can select a particular scan because it keeps track of every scan historically that that particular job has run and its findings and results. And you can go up here to export and you can say export to Nessus file if you'd like. Once that file is exported, you can actually open that file in Notepad. There's a couple things I wanna show you with that. So if you open the file and you do a search for credentialed or credentialed underscore scan, this true tag is extremely important. If the true tag is there, that means it was able to access that machine using the credentials and the information that you provided to get a thorough scan using those credentials on that machine. If it says false in that scan file, that means it wasn't able to get a credentialed scan using those credentials and able to access that box as an admin to get a very, very thorough scan. Now we know how to export our information. We know how to conduct our scans and get good scans. How do we troubleshoot those scans? So I created this test scan and I eliminated a few things that I had mentioned when we were on here and setting up the scan. So I'm gonna to go to vulnerabilities and you notice it didn't find all of that stuff we found in our scan that we just showed. So I need to figure out why my scan's not accessing these boxes or what's wrong with my scan. First thing I would look at is stands out, WMI not available. So if we go in here, we can see it couldn't scan any of the IP addresses that we had put into our targets. And it says because the WMI space namespace wasn't available. So it couldn't connect it to it. So that's a remote connection. And again, the scan's being done over WMI. So it's going to need that to be able to access that box. Going back to our vulnerabilities, targeted credentialed scan by authentication. 
This is plugin ID 104410, and the output says it wasn't able to access this machine via SMB, port 445. That could be a firewall issue. Maybe the firewall's on that host and it's not allowing 445, or maybe the scanner machine that I'm currently on isn't allowed to talk to that box and is being blocked by the firewall, and it couldn't do it on any of those machines. But the big thing is, if you go to more, here's the user account we created to do that scan, I've got a bunch of other plugins or identifications on those plugins, SMB login. So it says SMB login wasn't possible. Now, that could be one of two things. Either one, SMB, the correct version, I believe in this current scanner, it's SMB version two, is not enabled on that machine. The other thing is, is our credentials could be wrong. Maybe the password on the account that we're using trying to scan that machine, I typed the password in wrong. So if you're unable to get credentialed scans, you want to go ahead and troubleshoot this. You want to find out the reasoning behind it and see if you can find out why your scans are not being able to access those machines. Then go into configure, change what needs to be done from a configuration standpoint of the scanner, or go to your group policy or your machine specifically and make appropriate changes so that the scanner can access that box. For those remote capabilities, number one, and then number two, using that credential that you gave it. Another thing you can do, I'm just gonna do a simple Google search, Tenable Nessus failed on Windows checks. And when I click on that, immediately I find a link to Tenable, as Tenable's the maker and manufacturer of Tenable Nessus. They also have a troubleshooting document on how to test WMI, telling you everything that needs to be enabled, local administrator right, file print sharing need to be enabled, Remote registry has to be enabled, must be able to contact WMI, so that has to be enabled. Admin shares need to be enabled, and they give you PowerShell scripts that you can run remotely to try and connect to that box for each of these pieces to try and figure out what is failing at getting a credential scan for that particular box. Now, all of this has been going over how to do it, a Nessus scan on Windows systems. But the same steps, the same kind of configuration information in your scanner has to be provided depending on the operating system that you're scanning. If it's Linux, it's going to ask you for SSH credentials that have pseudo capability. And then there are certain things that need to be enabled or uh, opened up on the Linux box for it to be able to scan it. So all of this applies to the Nessus scanner and how to scan machines remotely using Nessus Professional.